Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were just recently announced, and wow, those are some interesting starters right there. Sprigatito, Fuecoco, and Quaxley are probably among one of my favorite starter trios of all time at this point, but who will you choose? Is it a really safe bet to choose right now when you don't even know what they're gonna evolve into? I mean, what if the cat stands on its hind legs? Ugh, that would be terrible. But that's why I'm here. I've been stuck in my containment chamber, studying, researching. And I think after many, many hours of tinkering, retooling, and trying to fit everything together, I think I have finally cracked the code on what the starters are going to evolve into. What is it? Let's find out. I have been scrolling through Twitter like an addict, and have found so many interesting starter evolution concepts, and yeah, they look nice and all, but the main thing they lack is cohesion. For the past however many generations now, there have been a consistent theming scheme of starter trios that have shown either right away or through their evolutions. The best example of this would be the Alolan starters, which were based on the circus, with the trick archer, tiger and flaming hoop, and a seal balancing on a beach ball. Galar was British culture, Kalos was RPG classes, Sinnoh myths and legends, Unova royalty, etc, etc. And this is Spain! There's so much that goes on up there! And so to tie everything together, the best theming scheme that I could really think of that could tie everything together was Spanish Conquest, specifically the three G's of exploration. If you were taught about colonization, you probably know about Christopher Columbus, the Spanish period of exploration, etc, etc. And that was largely due to Spain following a mantra that simplified exactly what they were after, being God, gold, and glory. I think you can already associate which part goes where. Starting with the duck, Quaxley, or Quali. Regardless, Quaxley is clearly based on a duck, with many interpretations having a naval, sailor, or pirate theme. And that works out really well, but I'd like to twist it a little bit, making it more of a Spanish conquistador. And going back to that 3G's thing I mentioned 20 seconds earlier, Quaxley absolutely represents the glory part of that. On the website, Quaxley is an earnest and tidy duck, much like a private on a ship. That's their whole thing. And so, in order to evolve that, we go through the simplest path of Quaxley rising through the ranks as a cadet to a commander to a full-on conquistador admiral. The personality evolves with the evolution becoming more determined, more earnest, and more equipped to brave the world ahead like a pirate. In terms of design, I implemented ideas of Spanish and Portuguese naval attire, sailor suits, and at the end there I added a feather cutlass, like a shipman would use. All the water starters have a weapon in their design after all. Remember Italian? They gave the lizard a gun! I think this is okay. The animals I pulled from weren't the blue-footed booby, which is a common thought, but rather I gathered inspiration from ducks. Specifically, the white-headed duck, and finally, the Oka Empordanesa. Wow, I butchered that pronunciation. And guess what? By having this structure in the evolution, it literally goes duck, duck, goose. What? I felt clever thinking of that. Typing, however, is a challenge. I personally think it should be a water fighting, but I also see water flying, dark, ghost, or steel. Help, even pure water would also work. On to Fuecoco, people seem to be in a tissy trying to figure out whether or not it's going into the Chinese zodiac. To that, I say you should just settle down. It probably isn't an absolute. Shut up, it's the snake. We all know it's absolutely gonna be the snake. I'm not going to superior route with this whole thing, with it losing limbs and all, but it will turn into something reminiscent of a snake. Here's how. Fuecoco is naturally inspired by both a crocodile and a piquillo pepper. Note the shape of the body and how it's curving backwards, and specifically how it's drawn stout, unlike the chili pepper, which is longer and thinner. Peppers and crocodiles are typically found in Central and South America, where the Spanish conquered back then. And, not coincidentally, there's a folktale of a monster called the El Coco, a mythical ghost monster in the shape of a snake and is commonly compared to the Boogeyman. Also, in Brazilian folklore, the El Coco goes by Cuca, and would luck would have it, it is depicted as a female crocodile derived from the Portuguese word coca, which means coconut, but that doesn't really matter. Isn't that crazy? We have just found a way to tie together a crocodile, a snake, 
folklore and culture, as well as a potential type combo, just like that. I also think that the pepper will grow hotter as it evolves, going from a piquillo pepper to a jalapeno to a ghost pepper. That just kind of makes sense with everything that's going on thus far. What also makes sense is that Fue Coco would be the gold in the three Gs, both in a metaphorical sense with the culture brought over with the likes of peppers and tomatoes importing in, but also physically. I think adding gold accents where Fue Coco has those craft singles on their body would do one wonders for the design. Typing wise, fire dark, ground, or fire ghost works the best, with my preference being the latter. Finally, there's everyone's favorite weed cat, Sprigatito. This is the one I'm the most excited to show off, despite the fact that it's my least favorite of the three. And with only one G left, God, you're probably wondering how I could tie this all together into one design. Well, allow me to enlighten you. All grass starters evolve from extinct animals or megafauna, and Sprigatito will be no exception. Luckily for us, the European cave lion and scimitar cat both exist, or, well, existed, giving people options. I've seen people make panthers, tigers, and lions, and I'm personally going to be making the lion as well, and here's why. Lions are kind of important to Spanish culture, as they can be seen on the Spanish coat of arms, see here and here. However, in a very specific interpretation in 1495, they include this person here, Isabella I of Castile. She was a very important figure in 1400 Spain, as she was the main person who pushed the effort to spread Christianity alongside her husband, King Ferdinand II, as well as the fact that she was one of many with the title, The Iron Queen. The other ones just don't matter in this example. She, as it just might happen, was very religious. Very Christian. Another thing that you wouldn't expect to have Christian ties are roses, specifically maroon roses, like the color of Sprigatito's eyes. The reason I bring these up is because of the imagery that surround these roses, that being of the Virgin Mary. Maroon roses can sometimes be seen alongside her in famous depictions. And when crusading around South America, Isabel I of Castile spread the word of Christianity. And when the native South Americans saw the Virgin Mary, they said something along the lines of, Hey, that looks like our people's interpretations of the sun god. Bada bing, bada boom, that ties together Isabella I to the maroon roses. Boom bing pow, that's the end of that history lesson. And luckily, we can incorporate all of those things that I just said into the evolution's designs. As for typing, grass fairy, grass ground, or my personal preference, grass steel, could all work for these. And that's the end of the video. Who are you choosing? What are their names? Let me know below. Bye.